Okay, Bobo's back with you here at 3Zen. So, now we've had our briefing. By the way, do you know the difference between pilots and apes? Ever seen two apes sit around and brief each other? All right. Now we've had our briefing. We head down to the uh, op center. We used to call it a uh, talk, a training op center. And there you get briefed again by the soft, the supervisor of flying. You sign out for the jet and so forth. Come back down the hall and uh, pass by the men's room, cycle off the tank if you need to, and then out through the chute room after you've uh, checked over your personal equipment, and then uh, hop on the trolley, head out to the uh, airplane, and uh, do the normal pre-flight and then climb in. We uh, During the briefing, we will have set a start time. Usually, the start time was more important when you were in different rows. You couldn't see each other. Uh, actually, I misled you here. We would have a check-in time a couple minutes before the start time. Uh, and that was really handy when you were in different rows of aircraft and you couldn't see each other. But... Uh, I think this is as good a time as any to tell you this story. Uncle Marty was one of my uh, young IPs at Vance, and when he completed his FAPE assignment, he got an A7. So he goes out to um, uh, Davis Monthan for A7 school. He called me up one day, he was just laughing his butt off. He called me up and he says, man, he says, I dodged a bullet. And I said, how's that? He said, well, he said, we were taking a three ship to the range. And we had this old crusty major that was the flight commander, and he's number two. A young Lieutenant Schmuckenfuss was number one. And he said that the Lieutenant was just, he was really hyped. Okay, so we um, get a briefing, and we have a start time of uh, 0800 and a check in time of, let's call it uh, 0757. So he said, we get strapped in the jets. And he said, we're sitting right next to each other. That's fine. He says, the major's sitting there. He's got his arms on the rail and his mask is hanging, sun visor's down. He's just kind of sitting there enjoying the morning, looking around. And he says, we're sitting there and we hear um, something like uh, slough flight check. And the major sits there, we're kind of looking around. And a young Lieutenant Schmuckenfuss says, slough flight check. The only problem is it's... Uh, Check-in time was 7.57, and this is 7.55. The major's sitting there like this, and just ignore him. And the uh, lieutenant says, Slough 2, Slough lead, do you copy? And like he could have, he didn't want to be bothered. The major takes his arm off the rail, reaches in, grabs a mic button, and he says, Slough lead. He says, what was the frickin' check-in time? He says, look at your frickin' watch. And then he put his arms back up on the rails. And Marty says, boy, am I glad that wasn't me. Okay. So anyway, we'd have a check-in time. Start. And then uh, lead call for taxi. And usually you collect each other. You had each other's tail numbers. So if, if you weren't right next to each other, you'd taxi out of, out of uh, the chocks. And by the time you got out to the end of the, the uh, aircraft there, you, you'd spot each other. And then... Uh, be a right or left hand turn depending on what runway you're using. Kind of everybody collect themselves. We would um, taxi with uh, either side of the uh, taxi line. Uh, I think the, uh, if I remember right, the, the object, object was to put our wingtip on the taxi line as we're taxiing out. And they showed you a reference uh, in the can with uh, reference to the canopy. So it was really, really easy to do once you got onto it. So you taxi out there pull into the um, uh, last chance area where the uh, crew chiefs would, uh, the ground crew would come and check you over for any anomalies. Then once you're good to go, you're good to go. I mentioned this in an earlier video. Um, we always matched Leeds canopies. If lead had the canopies up, we had ours up and so forth. If they were down, we had ours down. So everything being copacetic, um, Lead would then uh, get a, uh, a nod from number two and telling him that he was ready and he'd call for, um, call for takeoff and departure. Put the uh, canopies down and um, once you got clearance for takeoff, then take the runway. 
Let's see, I'm looking at five minutes here. I might as well get us airborne. So the placement of the number two guy was a function of a lot of things. Weather, which way were the winds coming? The direction of traffic, which way were you going to turn out of traffic? The type of take, uh, formation takeoff are you going to do? We could do um, formation takeoff where we took off uh, in fingertip. Uh, that would be about 25 foot wingtip spacing on takeoff, if I remember right. And, uh, or we could do what they call a string takeoff, where four seconds spacing or eight seconds spacing, depending on how many airplanes you had on the runway, uh, two, f three, or four. And uh, again, weather was a consideration there. So a lot of times um, we would take off and, uh, and like advance, it'd be a, a right hand turn out of traffic. Um, again, the winds might put them on the left side if we had two strong winds, but otherwise put them on the right side and you get airborne and just take them on out and up you go. So when you get on the runway, we had a very specific procedure. You get out on the runway and lead would look over at uh, number two and if number two was in position, he'd give a head nod and then uh, lead would uh, give him the run up signal look back and two would nod his head. So you run them up. Now you want to just look at the engine instruments and make sure they're all parallel. You, you know it's not one of those okay RPM is is 99.0 uh, to 100.5. EGT is 630 to 645. Oh Jesus Christ. You're gonna kill them. So anyway we'd run them up the mill and you're sitting there uh, look down the engine instruments, do a control check, look back if number two's ready, um, you go like that and lead would then tap his helmet, put the head back and then come forward as he came forward, release brakes and go to AB. Yeah, I had it happen uh, one time. Uh, lead looks over at two and I'm sitting there, it was a good day for flying and gives him the uh, head tap, head back, and he goes, oh shit, I forgot to set the IFF, the turn transponder. So he puts his head forward to set the transponder, look down at it, set the transponder, and two just bolts. <laughs> Good one. Anyway, so then you go to full, as leader, you go to full AB, make sure you got two nozzle swings, and good burner lights, and then you back it off just a, a little bit. That give number two some um, little bit of uh, space to to play with the throttles and stay in position. And then this is where it was really important for Lead to have his A game because he was responsible now for two airplanes rolling down the runway. So mini cell check speed was was important, and then the go no go speed. And then as number two, you're sitting there and you're watching for nose extension. Once you see that nose start to extend, you start to bring back the stick to match his pitch attitude. And then you get airborne. Um, lead has the responsibility now to look back, make sure that two is airborne and that um, you got two positives, you're, you're actually flying. And then uh, put the gear up and then delay a little bit and put the flaps. By doing that, you give uh, two a little bit more throttle to play with there. Right? It gives them a little bit of an advantage and so forth. And uh, that's all there is to it for the uh, takeoff. And then make a departure turn, call departure control, and tell them you're airborne. And um, that was about it. That was uh, a 17 center. One day I was flying with Gary Green. Actually, Gary Green was leading. I was on his left side with um, Lloyd Boone. And that's the day Lloyd, he was really pumped that day. We get airborne, he sees Gary Green's uh, gear come up, so Lloyd put our gear up and he put the flaps full down. That was exciting. That was, the airplane just kind of went like that. Mm -hmm. And then Gary looked over at me and says, you overspeed him, Bob? No, I didn't, he did. Anyway, with that, I think we've, uh, had enough fun here, so I'll catch up with you on uh, departure. And with that, Bobo, base gear stopped.